friend of mine gave me this Panasonic Lumix camera. He was about to throw it away. It's a 14 megapixel camera and it was working fine. The good news is it actually came with the charger. Usually when you get these things at Goodwill or someplace like that, they don't come with a charger. So of course my first thoughts were to take it apart and see if I couldn't convert it to infrared. I've tried this before on several point and shoot cameras and with some degrees of success and many failures. The procedure is simple enough. You remove the infrared blocking filter and afterwards you add an infrared pass filter to the front of the camera. The problems arise when you remove the infrared blocking filter. Some point and shoot cameras can't focus properly because the little bitty infrared blocking filter that was in front of the sensor, its thickness is not accounted for and the lens can't move forward or back far enough to actually get a correct focus. I found a good resource on YouTube by a fellow named Graham Houghton and he converted a similar Panasonic point and shoot camera which was a good help. I'll leave links to that address on YouTube below so that you can watch his videos if you choose. First you have to remove these two screws on the side. Then you have to remove these two screws on the other side. When I did that I forgot to remove this hand strap so I had to fiddle with that for five minutes. Next we're going to remove these two screws on the bottom of the camera. Not the third one, just the two that are on the back plate. Removing the back plate is the most difficult thing because of this ribbon cable. There's a little black release lever you have to flip to get the cable out. That's not too hard, but getting it back in will exercise your patience. You'll need a pair of tweezers and a lot of patience to get that ribbon cable back in after you try to reassemble. There's a picture of the release lever that you need to flip up, a little black lever, so that you can pull the cable out. Next, we have to remove these three little black screws. Once those are out, we can take the metal plate off the back, but it has three little snap-on connectors, one at the top, one at the side, and this one at the bottom. Just pry them a little up and it'll pop right out. There's the shield outside. Here's the meat of the situation. Now we have to remove the three screws that hide the sensor. Now this is a picture of the sensor taken off with the ribbon cable, again with the little black slip-on connector that releases it. Here we use a tiny screwdriver to pry off the infrared cover. That's what the sensor looks like with the cover off. This is the infrared blocking filter. With everything apart, be careful not to get any dirt or debris or dust on the sensor. Most intelligent people would use a small blower to blow off any dust that's on there before they reassemble it. I just was careful and didn't and everything worked fine. Now the reassembly is just the opposite of the disassembly. The only problem you'll probably have is putting that back cover back on with the ribbon cable and a pair of tweezers. When you get to that step, have a cup of tea first, then carefully and laboriously try and get that little ribbon cable back into the inserted into the female connector and snap on the black lock. At this point in time, I didn't have the correct infrared filter to fasten to the top of the camera so I just held an old 720 nanometer infrared pass filter in front of the lens and took a couple test pictures. I was mostly concerned about the ability to focus properly. As I stated at the beginning a lot of these little cameras when you remove the infrared blocking filter they won't focus properly. This was a picture I took out the front door of my neighbor's house. I'm pretty happy with the focus. This is the filter I ordered from eBay. The choice of 37 millimeter was so that it would fit properly on the front of the Panasonic camera. The choice of 720 nanometers 
was that's pure infrared blocking. Some people use a higher number nanometer like 850 which allows some visible light in which is good for getting pictures of the sky as well as the infrared objects around you. After waiting two weeks for this package to arrive from China, I finally got an infrared pass filter for the camera. To mount the infrared filter onto this camera, you have to extend the lens and then you need to remove the battery so that the lens won't retract on you while you're trying to work on it. Here I'm taking the lens out and making sure that it actually fits properly on the barrel of this camera. The reason I ordered 37 millimeter was so that it would clear everything. Seems to be okay. I'm going to mix some two-part epoxy up here. The way I always do this, I always like to use post-it notes to stir the epoxy on to get it thoroughly mixed. That's nice and easy and when you're done after it hardens, 24 hours later, you just throw away that one piece of post-it note. Just a little dab of the hardener and the mix, and you combine it 50-50. I use this old putty knife that I've had around for years and years to stir it up. Yes, you can't stir too much but you have to be careful because it kicks in five minutes so we have to get on with the process here. I'm going to take the black infrared filter which you can't see through because it only passes infrared light and just slide it around on the top of this epoxy mix so that the bottom of the filter is completely covered with epoxy and then as gently as I can without messing things up, put it on the front of the camera. I could feel a little oozing out into my fingertips here. I might have to peel off some more later. Well, that seemed to work okay. So now let's go out and take some pictures around the neighborhood. Here's a small lake in the background and a spawning stream in our area. Here's the front of our clubhouse. Here's a picture of the lake one street away from our house and I thought it, sky would look nicer if I did sky replacement in Photoshop so I added a nice blue sky. Some people like that, some people hate it. Here's a picture of an interesting reddish uh, burning bush kind of plant and taken with the iPhone and here's the same thing with the Panasonic infrared camera. Here's another picture taken with an iPhone and the same picture taken with the Panasonic infrared. Well that's it guys thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed the video. If you click the subscribe button you never know what you might see just saying.